Hello and welcome to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me Niall Murphy and here I am um, by the sea as you can see and if I can just turn the camera around so you can get a good view of the coconut trees around me there you go yes I'm in this place at the moment um, called El Zonte which is in El Salvador um, by a beach known as Bitcoin Beach and I thought this would be a good and interesting place to come why not it's the 29th of um, October 2022 and of course um, every 90 days or so I have to get out of Costa Rica that's just the way it is so I thought it'd be a good idea to um, come here and um, you know uh, make, a, make a video make a YouTube video uh, this while I'm not in Costa Rica because I do like to do that capture a few new places last time I'd done this which was I think was about three months ago I was in um, Bogota Colombia and of course very recently as you know, I was in Mexico City, so I'm sorry I look like I'm doing a lot of jet setting. Um, that's the trouble. But um, at the moment, I suppose I am. It won't last, though. I'll be doing nothing and staying in one place for the next three months. That's the thing. So what I would like to talk about today, since I left the UK, I, don't, I go and I leave the UK and it fucks up, doesn't it? I mean, my bloody hell, it fucks up. It goes really seriously wrong. All right. I mean, the Queen dies. I mean, all right. She was quite old and it was inevitable, I suppose, that it was likely that she was going to die because she was very old, right? So, and then King Charlie comes in and, well, that's okay, I suppose it's just part of the course, really. But the, um, the other side of the tier of the rulers, if you like, that is the government, the cacistocracy, um, you know, in, uh, in the English constitution or British constitution or whatever, the royals known as the dignified, and the government is known as the efficient. Well, I kind of think that all you've got to do is look at Harry and also look at Prince Andrew. <laughs> I think of them as the undignified. And you look at the government, and well, I just think of them as being the inefficient. So here we are, we've got the undignified. Well, the Queen most certainly was dignified. Whatever you, you think of her, there was no one like her in the world. And the fact is that she managed to last all the time from the early 1950s right up until she died with no scandal, really, no scandals at all. Bloody hell, no one does that these days, do they? No, right. But in the last, I don't know, few months, you know, what's happened? Well, the, the plebiscite vote voted for Boris Johnson to be the Prime Minister of the UK. And what they do, they throw him under the bus and they get the Conservative Party voters to vote for the new leader. And then Liz Truss wins. The Conservative Party voters are then thrown under the bus as the bankers and the financial sector decide that oh we can't have that type of budget you're having a laugh we want our man in so they put rishi in in a in a very very quick you know change of heart you could call it yeah right now just before that happens jeremy c h u next tuesday um decides to sashay or insinuate his way into number 11 downing street don't trust him his eyes are too close together and plus he looks too much like arnold rimmer just imagine him having an h on his head right and then Grant Shapps insinuates and sachets his way into the Home Office. Um, and Suella Braveman resigns because she breached some protocol by sharing some private document in a WhatsApp group. Oh. But then, all of a sudden, that's a change of heart again and she's back. It's like they really don't know. I mean, you know, this is like, a, this is like the government reshuffle uh, equivalent of a girly shopping trip to the amount of indecision that's going on here, man, you know? It's a flipping country. Not a fucking pair of shoes. That's what we want to say. Yeah. So I look at this whole thing, and all right, there'll be people out there say this is a grand conspiracy, and I'm looking and thinking they really don't know their ass from their elbow. Do you honestly think these people are smart enough to do it? They can't run an economy. They can't run a country. They can't fucking run anything. They can't do anything at all. It's just incompetence all the way round. Now I know that the um, the, the World Economic Forum are salivating at the chance that you know to take over the whole world because the future is ours it belongs to us as they say and you will own nothing and you will be very happy so this is one of the reasons why I decided to come here to where I'm now El Zonte El, Zonte, El Salvador also known as Bitcoin Beach because I wanted to meet a few people and have a chat with a few of the people who are staying here western people in particular who come to visit to find out right what is their view on this and what is their view on the future, I suppose? And what do you make of what is going on at the moment? 
Now, if you go online, people love making you paranoid. And this is the thing. The online world is just full of conspiracy craziness about, you know, everything from CBDCs to digital enslavement to um, a new kind of form of serfdom to the taking over the world of the World Economic Forum to, well, we might as well have Klaus Schwab as our Prime Minister in the UK now, all of that. And there doesn't seem to be any hope when you look at people who are online. And I'm the sort of the type of person who, as soon as I've decided to get away and spend a lot of time away from the UK, I'm of the opinion that there are actually more than one future. You know the old phrase, there are two paths you can go by, in the long run there's still time to change your road you're on. I also believe that of governments and the leaders in the world and the elites in the world, there's still time for them to change the road that they're on. And I honestly don't think that everyone in um, the elite is part of the conspiracy. I think some people are biding their time. Some people with a little bit of political expedience are trying to get themselves into, into the right places because they're actually trying to save us from ourselves. And I'm looking at this present um, situation we have in the government where, of course, as you say, they throw the voters under the bus, they throw the Conservative Party member voters under the bus, the banking classes get their person into power, and as a result of that, um, we get fishy, rishy, and jobs are good. And, and, um, but then, I have a second look, excuse my gimbal, didn't like me jumping then. Anyway, where was I? Yes, I have a second look at what's going on, and I see a few things that make me think maybe he's a double-edged sword and maybe he's not as bad as we thought because he reinstated Suella Braverman as soon as she went and Kemi Badenoch is in an interesting position to declare proper war on woke. Now, if it turns out that Kemi Badenoch um, is in a good position to fight woke from a position of a senior cabinet minister, then I can't see that as a bad thing. I certainly, most certainly hope that isn't. And it makes me wonder whether, of course, um, some of our leaders, should we say, and some of the elites are actually, you know, getting in themselves as a result of political expedience into some position so that they can slow down the globalist agenda. But just acting like they are part of it. Because I honestly don't believe anyone really wants to live in a dystopia. And I think that a lot of the people who are in position to bring this dystopia in, who have put themselves into the right positions, are probably reluctant about it and probably want to stop it too. And my problem, of course, with conspiracy theorists and going full-on conspiracist about everything is it's a very defeatist attitude. As I say, one is you've given up and there is no hope, there is no winning, there is no victory, there's nothing we can do about anything. Right? In which case, you might, we might as well just give up, we might as well just stop. There is no future, there is no hope. Now, if you think like that, it's a very defeatist attitude, and you might as well just, you know, entirely, entirely give up at this point. There is no point. There has to be a point. And my attitude is that if you believe that there is a point to the world, and there is a point, and there is something good that can come out of it, and that there is a reason to not give up, then there has to be hope that there is always hope, Aragorn said to that boy in Lord of the Rings when they were in Helm's Deep and they were outnumbered by orcs. And he looked at his terrible sword and told him it was a good sword because he was trying to boost his morale. There is always hope. And there might be this 11th hour, 11.59 hope comes along. We didn't expect the end of the Cold War. And that's what you've got to bear in mind. We didn't expect that we weren't going to be blown up by nukes in the 1980s. But we didn't get blown up by nukes in the 1980s, and that's the whole point. We might not get blown up and nuked by Russia. So this is what I mean. The psyops of the Western world might be the real enemy here, um, trying to scaremonger us with Putin. That might be the real problem that's going on here at the moment. And as I say, I'm in a place now where I'm thinking about what could be the future of money, the future of finance. This place, in between four and six years, could be completely transformed. It could be a new what I call it, a place where people go to escape um, the clutchings, shall we say, of centralisation. And there may be more countries and there may be more places like this turning up in the world. There may be a new world order in a multi-tiered uh, world, you know, what I say, a multipolar world, and one of those poles of a multipolar world, while it might be bloody technocracy in the West and it might be communism in China 
and it might be um, serfdom of other kinds in other parts of the world, but there might be a new form of financial libertarianism, you know, where those who manage to escape owning something that isn't confiscatable by the World Economic Forum, who are even happier than those who own nothing and are happy, right, escape too. Now, I don't know, of course, whether this is going to actually happen or not, whether what I'm thinking is pie in the sky. Um, it might just so turn out that I'm wrong. But I'm ever the optimistic when it comes to, I'm ever the optimist, shall I say, when it comes to stuff like this. And you've got to go and you've got to look for places, you've got to find places, you've got to travel to these places, if, if indeed you can. It's most certainly better than it is sitting at home, being on your computer, being in your mum's basement and never going anywhere. And yes, there might be people who think, oh, but you're on the internet, Niall. Yes, I'm on the internet, but I'm also away from uh, the basement dwelling world and I'm out there in the world. So that's the thing, and I mean, you know, look at me, I've, I've not even flipping got anywhere near 1,300 flipping subscribers. I'm, I'm no one in this space, right? That's the thing. But yeah, here I am, you know, tempting to, uh, to do it. And I think it's a lot to do with the state mind, mindset, so to say, that we just need more and more people to be hopeful, to be optimistic. And there could be people out there saying, yeah, but it's all right for you, Niall. Well, it is all right for me, actually, very, very, thank you very much because it was my mindset that got me to right here, right now, right? I could quite easily have been carrying on being resentful and being miserable and making excuses for why I can't do things. I could have been doing this all my life. I could have been doing this for longer than I actually did, but I didn't. I decided there had to be another way, right? And that's the thing, there had to be another way. And so I kind of feel that like this stuff about manifesting what you have in your mind, there is some truth in it, of course. It's not the way the New Ages describe it. It's not something that's solipsistic, right? But as I say, from over here, looking at the UK, from the perspective of the news, and seeing what's going on, I do think that, yeah, if you allow these people to use psychological means to demoralise you, it does look quite demoralising if you're stuck in that, stuck in that world, and stuck in all those echo chambers. Which is one reason why you should be looking for alternatives. And even if you can't leave the UK, even if you can't leave the country that you're in, if you're not from the UK and you're in other countries, even if you can't leave these places, you need to leave. If you're in an echo chamber that's been reinforced by the internet and by social media, you need to leave that. Even if you can't travel anywhere and if there's no money for you to go anywhere, you have to start by changing the way you see reality. That's what it all comes down to. So I'm going to leave it at that because I'm on a bit of a tangential waffle at the moment. And I'm standing looking like a right pillock with a whole bunch of people looking at me thinking, what's this weirdo doing with his camera and his gimbal? So, from El Zonte, from Bitcoin Beach, El Salvador, see you later, alligator. See you soon. Baboon. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And while you're at it, do your bit to help send big tech to the land of MySpace by having a look at the show notes below and checking out our alternative platforms.